This director and actor pair brought to screen the single most successful video game to movie franchise in history. This week's pairing brings together skill and sexiness. That's right, the skill of Mila Jovovich and the sexiness of Paul W.S. Anderson on today's episode of Deadly Duos. Before Ukrainian-born supermodel Mila Jovovich was a famous actress, she was best known for a small handful of TV appearances and the lead role in the Who Asked For It sequel, Return to the Blue Lagoon. Two years after appearing in Blue Lagoon, Jovovich would pop up in a Texas-centric indie film that gave Hollywood several exciting new faces, dazed and confused. Though the film is beloved, she was not an immediate breakout star. In fact, it would be four more years before the iconic science fiction film that would launch her path to stardom would be released. Meanwhile, an entire ocean away, a young British director made a controversial crime film that was banned in some cinemas in England. The film was called Shopping, which starred a young Jude Law and it was directed by Paul W.S. Anderson in 1994. The movie was not a huge hit, but it did afford him the opportunity to direct the first of what will be many big-budget Hollywood releases based on known commodities throughout his career, with the video game adaptation Mortal Kombat. The movie certainly has its flaws, but it is one of the few films that effectively captures the tone of the video game it is adapting, even with a PG-13 rating, and it is leagues better than the Super Mario Brothers movie from only two years earlier. It's a fun, science fiction, fantasy, horror mashup with plenty of martial arts action. The movie was a hit at the box office, earning over $120 million. Anderson used the success of the first film to springboard onto his next project, a science fiction horror film called Event Horizon. Take one part Ridley Scott's Alien, mix in a dash of Hellraiser, and you've got the makings of Event Horizon. After the success of Mortal Kombat, Anderson had the clout to make the movie R-rated, and he took full advantage of it during the shooting. However, an original cut of the film, with much more disturbing imagery, has been long since lost and the version that made it to screens, while still scary, only makes fans wonder what might have been. After Anderson's epic science fiction story, Jovovich had an epic space story of her own, The Fifth Element, the space opera from French director Luc Besson. Jovovich was brilliant in the nearly wordless role of Lilu, the mysterious alien with brightly colored hair dressed only in basically three ace bandages. The movie cost a whopping $90 million, but its success at the box office eclipsed that huge number. The movie earned $250 million. Jovovich was officially a star. Anderson, meanwhile, went back to science fiction for his next film. Soldier is the story of an obsolete, genetically engineered military man played by Kurt Russell. After being abandoned by his trainers and left to die, Russell's life is changed when he meets a poor family in a community on a small, isolated planet. Eventually, he must face the new and improved soldiers that replaced him. The movie itself was a massive failure, making less than $15 million on a budget of 60. Anderson needed a hit badly if he was going to continue to be given budgets to make huge science fiction epics. And that is when lightning struck for Anderson and Jovovich. The first project they worked on together was an adaptation of the video game franchise Resident Evil. The film had been discussed for years before finally reaching the screen with Anderson directing and Jovovich starring as Alice. The blending of horror and science fiction, along with a healthy helping of action, made the film a breakout hit, making over $100 million and more than tripling its budget. Though the film was more of a pastiche of elements from various Resident Evil games rather than a faithful adaptation, the movie The movie was fun and fast-paced. The screen was not the only successful collaboration for Anderson and Jovovich, however. In 2003, after having worked together on Resident Evil, Anderson asked Jovovich to marry him. They were in a relationship on and off for about four years before officially becoming a couple again in 2007. They have three children together, and they tied the knot in 2009. Successful on screen and off, Jovovich and Anderson reteamed in 2004 for Resident Evil Apocalypse. However, that movie was directed by Russell Mulcahy because Anderson was busy bringing two massive franchises together on the big screen with Alien vs. Predator. Anderson would stay on the Resident Evil franchise as writer for Apocalypse and the next film, Extinction, before returning to the fold as director on Resident Evil Afterlife. Though they would continue on in the franchise together, they also made notable projects on their own 
in between the Resident Evil films. Anderson would direct a big-budget remake of the exploitation science fiction classic Death Race, while Jovovich would appear in excellent but underseen genre films that are sure to be modern cult classics. Ultraviolet, directed by Kurt Wimmer of Equilibrium fame, gave Jovovich the chance to play another badass action character, this time a vampire, and she would join Steve Zahn and Timothy Oliphant for the criminally underrated thriller film A Perfect Getaway from Pitch Black director David Toohey. By the time Anderson and Jovovich brought the final three Resident Evil films to screen, they had their franchise down to a science. Badass heroine? Check. Seemingly endless hordes of zombies? Check. Gravity-defying action sequences and super slow motion? Check. They understood their loyal audience, and they delivered on it appropriately. All told, the Resident Evil movie franchise has grossed over $1.2 billion. It is not only an immensely successful horror franchise, but it is by far the most successful and well-received video game adaptation yet to reach the screen. Both Anderson and Jovovich had greater designs for their careers than only making the Resident Evil movies, however. Deciding to branch out into other genres, but still wanting to work together, the couple brought an action-packed new version of The Three Musketeers to the screen in 2011. The film cost $75 million, and it made back almost double its budget. However, the movie was not well-received critically. Hoping to prove that he was more than just a blockbuster sci-fi director, Anderson went back to the well of historical adventure in 2014's Pompeii. Based on the famous volcanic eruption, the movie is a strange mix of period epic and big-budget action disaster. The movie made its money back, but just barely. In a world filled with enormous action movies, it simply didn't stand out in the crowd. After they worked together on the last entry in the Resident Evil series, 2017's The Final Chapter, Jovovich took advantage of her reputation as a badass female horror action star. She showed up in the 2019 remake of Hellboy, and the same year, she also had a fascinating role in the dark science fiction and fantasy film Paradise Hills. So what's next for this deadly duo? Now that the Resident Evil franchise is officially finished, by which I mean someone will be rebooting it any second, is that the end for the collaborations between Anderson and Jovovich? The safe answer is, of course not. Aside from the fact that they're married and they're both still working in Hollywood, we already have proof of another film collaboration between them. Scheduled for later in 2020, Anderson and Jovovich will be working together on Monster Hunter. Since they make a great team and they're not going anywhere anytime soon, what's the next project you would like to see Mila Jovovich and Paul W.S. Anderson work on together? That's it for another episode of Deadly Duos. We'll see you next time for another fantastic scare pair.